Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And today we are going to do a double comic book review, but I will probably stay away from some spoilers because I really want you to check out these comic books yourselves, although they are comic books from about 15 plus years ago, some of them. So uh, so some of them you've probably already read if you're a big Marvel fan. But if you haven't and you want to learn more about Black Panther or read some cool runs, I'm going to talk about two stories today that were very mean a lot to me, I guess. Um, you know, I, like I said before in a previous video, in 2008, I was able to work at BET uh, during Reginald Hudlin's, uh, you know, presidency of it when he was in charge. And uh, and I got a few times where I got to interact with him and he would talk about Black Panther and I would talk about Black Panther. In fact, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of his stuff. So he had, uh, like, he'd done movies like House Party and uh, Bay Bay's Kids and I think Boomerang was another one. Um, so there's a lot of cool stuff he's worked on that I'm a big fan of. I even know the kid and play dance, or I did then. And I guess that was one of the things that someone put me on the spot and said, all right, let's do it. And we did, it, you know, at, at the office. And I thought that was kind of cool that, uh, <laughs> like, I got to do the kid and play dance. So anyway, these are things that I've written in my journals because every time I worked on a production, and I'm so glad I did this, I would keep journals of it. Sometimes I would put pictures in there too, if I was allowed to take pictures. Um, but mostly I would just write in these journals of what I did on these sets when I worked on movie sets and TV shows. And I would keep like a log, uh, good and bad, you know, stories where, uh, you know, that don't paint me in a good light sometimes and stories where, you know, I feel like, um, you know, I succeeded at something for working really hard. And, and so I thought that was cool to, that I had those, especially considering in 2010, I lost all those memories due to a brain aneurysm. So, uh, and then I would talk to my mom about some of this stuff too, you know, like, oh, you know, I worked at BET and she's like, oh yeah, you met like a hero of yours. And, uh, and so, you know, then years later I got to meet Reggie again and he remembered me and we would talk Black Panther at Golden Apple Comics and stuff whenever I would see him. So really cool guy, really awesome, big fan of his. So there is a bias here, obviously, um, but I still do pick apart stories, you know, I'm, I'm definitely shred stories apart and I'll, I'll be honest when I don't like something. But in this case, um, maybe besides some of the pacing, because I feel like maybe it could have went one more issue. This first story we're going to talk about, who is Black Panther, is so awesome. And like I said, I, my maybe my one criticism would be, man, I wish it ran one more issue. But I don't think it could because issue seven was like a tie-in to House of M. So it was like a one-shot tie-in. And I think that had to come out at that time because it feels part towards the end of the story, it feels a little rushed. Uh, but it still wraps up okay, like nicely, like I was satisfied but I still feel like, oh man, and maybe that's just because I loved it so much I didn't want it to end, and that's why I want a seventh issue. Um, but the storyline, though, is exactly what the title is. Who is the Black Panther? What does it mean to be T'Challa of Wakanda, the son of T'Chaka, and also taking on the mantle of Black Panther? What does that mean in this modern day when this book was coming out? I think in like 2005, so like I said, 17 years ago. Um, but, uh, but that's what it is. And John Romita Jr. does the artwork, and he does a phenomenal job. I love his art on this story. It's so good. The, like the planes and kind of the backgrounds, the colorists, like the team that put this together, top notch for sure. And what I like is the book starts off with like the history of Wakanda. It kind of shows you what Wakanda was like in the 5th century, and then like the 14th century, and then, you know, 19th century, and then into today. And I kind of like going through that because it all, it all makes sense. It feeds the story who is Black Panther. And obviously it's the person who it's meant to be at that time. That's who Black Panther is. The, the perfect person for that role with the right heart, the right mentality, the right morals, hopefully, but someone who will still have to make tough decisions. And in this case, uh, you know, T'Challa has to do that. So the story begins with him kind of trying to uh, prove himself again as Black Panther. He's getting into uh, battles, kind of like they did in the, the movie where he has to like, you know, be challenged by other tribes of Wakanda. Um, so he gets into some battles in the beginning, and then you find out actually the person in the Black Panther costume is not Black Panther. Uh, there's a cool twist there um, with uh, some of the battles because a, a big guy shows up to like beat up Black Panther, and he's actually winning. And everyone's like, how is this guy beating Black Panther? And then another challenger shows up, and then another, and then you start seeing like what's really going on. So I thought that was really cool, to, a good way to start the book off and to bring T'Challa back into the world. And so while they're doing that and they're setting up Wakanda and they're talking about the history of it, you have Ulysses Claw, who is uh, also talking about Wakanda. He's telling this story of Wakanda to a prisoner called the Cannibal. And, uh, and Claw is there to break the Cannibal out and form a team because they're going to go get revenge on Wakanda, or at least you know, Claw wants revenge. Uh, because at one point he killed 
uh, T'Chaka, I believe, uh, they show him kill a Black Panther um, and then also threaten to kill his wife, who was pregnant at the time, uh, with Shuri. But uh, the little boy, who is young T'Challa, picks up a gun and shoots Claw to injure him. And that's how Claw then gets pulled in, picked up by a, a villain organization later on. And they're like, hey, you successfully took out a Black Panther. You know, we want to upgrade you. You're missing an arm now. You're wounded. So they put in the mechanical parts to give him his arm and stuff. So it kind of ties their two origins in together um, in a way that I think I think that was partly the story before. But the way they do it in this and kind of let it breathe and, and flesh it out a little bit more was really cool and very emotional. Like it was it was really intense, those scenes. Um, so now Claw wants to get revenge, you know, for what happened to his body and everything. Um, but he also wants to kill another Black Panther, too. So he's putting together this team that has like the rhino on it, the cannibal, the radioactive man, and even Black Knight, who is like a, a someone for hire at this point in the comic books, who's a good guy, but is just being pulled into this battle. Uh, poor, poor uh, Dane Whitman. Um, I think that's his name, his real name. Or poor, poor Black Knight. Uh, not very uh, good to be pulled into a battle with Black Panther and Wakanda. And it doesn't go well. Every, all of them get beat up pretty good. Um, but uh, but I really like the story. And then you have Everett Ross and the government, this lady named Miss Reese. Uh, they are dissecting Wakanda. They're trying to learn about Wakanda too. So as Claw's narrating and telling the story to the cannibal and you know convincing him to join their team, uh, then you have the government also wondering about Wakanda. And there's this really great scene where they go, well, why haven't we sent anyone in to like, you know, um, kind of show them that we're the superpower, that America is the number one power on the planet. And they go, well, we actually did in a covert mission once. We sent uh, one of our super soldiers in and it just cuts to the shot of Captain America going into Wakanda and Black Panther beating him and picking him up, putting him on his shoulder and carrying him back to the border. And I was like, yeah, that's great. Like that's that actually happened. You know, Wakanda is undefeated, especially up until this point too in the comic books. Um, so I loved that. I was like, except for, you know, Claw killed uh, T'Chaka. So, um, but, you know, obviously uh, Steve Rogers fights with more honor and he wasn't there to kill anybody. And, uh, but he lost the fight. And there's, it's funny because there's this one like government agent guy that's, or like a politician guy who's like, bull crap. There's no way Captain America lost to this guy. And they're like, okay, believe whatever you want. But Everett Ross, Everett Ross keeps telling the story of like what's what's going on with Wakanda. So that's what this first story arc's about. It's basically reestablishing Wakanda, reestablishing T'Challa, what his role is, and then these uh, an actual invasion coming in. Like, you look, you know what? We can't stand that this place is undefeated. And we're going to, and, you know, we may have taken a couple lives from, you know, overall, but we haven't like crippled them. And that's what Claw wants to do. He wants to cripple Wakanda. So he brings his band of villains into the country to try to, you know, and strategically try to take this place down, even hacks into a, a program to, um, you know, and puts his mind into it to try to, to fight back uh, you know, and, and take down all their defenses and everything. But nothing goes his way. It's, it's really fun. And this also has a great Shuri uh, story building moment, too where she's like this young, she's not like she is in the movie. Uh, as Shuri in the comic books is like kind of this rebellious youngster. Yeah, she doesn't like tradition too, too much, but she also does honor a ton of it in some ways. She's not very tech savvy, but she's not an idiot either. So she's a little different than she is in the movies. Uh, I like both versions actually of the character. Um, but this one, she she kind of wants the mantle. There's a point in the story where she's like, maybe I should be Black Panther. And she goes to join the battle, but then it's already over and the challenge is over and T'Challa is once again is the winner. So clearly Reggie had maybe some inkling of doing something with her later on as a Black Panther. Um, but so, and we're going to talk about that here in a second with The Deadliest of the Species, which is a, a book that Reggie wrote after this run ended. Because throughout this run, you have T'Challa, he marries Storm. Um, she becomes queen with him, you know, on uh, in Wakanda. And they go through all these adventures. They become the new Fantastic Four for a while. They join the Fantastic Four. So there's all these great adventures. They fight the Marvel zombies at one point. And then the book ends. And that's when Shuri, the book gets rebooted as Black Panther, I think it, 2008, you know, because that's the year I think it released in. And then it releases with a new Black Panther. And uh, I thought they were going to call this one, Who is the New Black Panther? Um but I think most people that were reading the comics at the time pretty much figured out it was probably going to be Shuri, but there was still a little mystery they were building. A lot of the ads were like, who is it? Who's the new Black Panther? Um, and it was clearly a woman, but you just didn't know which female character because there were so many strong ones in Black Panther at the time. 
Um, so yeah, so this, to wrap this first story up, really good. Who is the Black Panther? I don't want to say how it ends, although obviously, you know, you probably could guess. And I think earlier I said Claw and them get beat up a little bit, but there's, it's a neat ending. Although I feel like the last couple pages feel a little rushed. I understand for time's sake and the next issue had to be a tie-in. I kind of understand why that probably feels that way, um, but it was still really good. It's a really solid run. I think it's available out there in hardcover from one of the Marvel Select, you know, hardcovers that they put out there. I think that might still be available, um, but if not, you can find the trade paperback and you can get it on Comixology as well. And as for the first Shuri story, like I said, it came out, I believe, in 2008. It's called The Deadliest of the Species. Once again, written by Reginald Hudlin and art this time by Ken Lashley, who does an awesome job. I love Ken's work. And, uh, and this introduces our first, you know, female Black Panther, at least at this point in the comics. Um, and it is, uh, it turns out to be Shuri, uh, obviously, uh, because, uh, so that I can't really spoil because I think most people know that uh, at this point. But this run is really neat because I feel like this new movie is probably going to pull a lot from this run. Probably not everything, obviously, and it's going to do its own thing because it's the MCU and they, they kind of have a different setup to their world already than some of the comics do. But in this one, it's really cool because you find out that at one point there was the Illuminati, right? And the one person who did not stay a member of the Illuminati was Black Panther. He didn't see the honor in this little secret organization of heroes, you know, uh, like or leaders, you know, heroic leaders like Charles Xavier and Namar and Mr. Fantastic and Black Bolt. And he's just kind of an Iron Man. And he's like, I, I don't know if I like this. So I don't want to be a part of it. So now that that's done and the Illuminati are gone, at this point in the comics, it's the Dark Reign. It's when Norman Osborn has taken over as, the, you know, the Iron Patriot. And uh, and he has his Dark Avengers, you know, in the spotlight. Um, so this takes place after Secret Invasion when Norman Osborn and his villains save the world. And then they get promoted, essentially, to the Avengers. So uh, while that's happening, you know, Wakanda still kind of mostly staying out of things, Um but uh, but then you have Namar coming in and going to T'Challa and saying, hey, let's join Norman Osborn. He's creating this thing called the Cabal that I'm going to be a part of with Emma Frost and Norman Osborn and some other villains, the Hood. And, uh, and he's like, so why don't we join them? Because obviously at some point they're going to fall. And when they do, me and you can take over that secret group, the Cabal, and we, Wakanda and Atlantis can lead this world into a better future. And, you know, Black Panther T'Challa's like, look, man, I didn't join the Illuminati. You think I'm going to hang out at a table with Norman Osborn and Emma Frost, who betrayed her, you know, her race of mutants? You know, like, he's like, I don't think so, man. Like, I'm I'm definitely, even though Emma Frost wasn't really doing that, she was kind of playing, you know, she was kind of being a secret agent in a way, you know, doing her thing. She always does. She, Emma Frost is on her side, <laughs> typically. So, but still, you know, T'Challa didn't want to be a part of it. So, you know, and Namar says, look, man, I you really shouldn't turn down this offer because I'm sure someone in the cabal or someone is going to come after you then if you don't side with us. And he's like, let them. Like, Wakanda's still undefeated. Bring it on. So he gets back in his ship with the Dora Milaje, and as they're taking off, someone attacks. Uh, and, and then the ship is damaged, and they can't make it back to Wakanda safely. They crash in Wakanda, and the Dora Milaje members that were with him are dead or severely wounded, one of them. And you have T'Challa himself, who's been put into a coma. So now the protector of Wakanda, just like they say in the new trailer for Wakanda Forever, the protector is gone. And so what, what do they do? Now they're open for attack by villains. But, you know, Ramonda, you know, the queen, uh, you know, T'Challa's mom, she's like, we aren't just one protector. We are a nation and we protect each other. Uh, in cases like this, if something like this happens. We've lost Black Panther before, her husband being one of them. She's like, we will still protect our own. So anyone who wants to attack, bring it on. And that's pretty much what happens. Wakanda starts getting attacked like a lot throughout that run, not just in this first series, um, even to the point where I think later on in Avengers vs. X-Men, Namor himself attacks and tries to flood Wakanda, and Shuri is the one who goes up against him. Uh, but in this, you find out the attack against T'Challa was um, actually by Dr. Doom. And I think that's why a lot of people are theorizing Dr. Doom may be the true villain of Wakanda Forever. I don't think that's the case. I think uh, I think it's going to be something different and, you know, probably not introduce a character like him at this point. But if they did, that would be awesome. Don't get me wrong. Dr. Doom is my favorite villain in comics. 
but I just feel like that's a lot to put into Wakanda Forever. Um, so I don't know if there's just like a, an Atlantean, like a Tuma, that is secretly manipulating Namor or something. Like, I, I feel like it's probably going to be more something like that in the movie. But um, but we'll see. That's just my theory about the movie. But this run here where it introduces Shuri is so neat because Shuri, she goes on this adventure where she's trying to reach the astral plane and talk to her father. She's trying to reach the, um, the, the God realm where she can talk to Bost and kind of plead her case and try to get the powers of the, the Black Panther. So she's going on this journey and she is not doing well at it. She's not having a, as deep of a conversation as she thinks she's having with her elders, you know, and she's revealing kind of her youth and ignorance on some things. And then going to Bost, he's just like, look, you are too entitled. Like you think you deserve this because of your blood. And that's not how this works. You need to earn this and you need to have the heart of a good warrior and person um, and having that balance like your brother does and uh, and like his father did. And, you, you know, and yeah, that still means you have to make tough decisions sometimes, but I'm not going to give the power of Black Panther to an entitled child. And, and so, she, you know, she comes back to the real world and is talking to her uncle. And there's other characters from the movie, you know, like Zuri and stuff like that, that pop up in this run, um, which is really cool. And she's talking and she's like, I, I, what do I do? Like, I'm, I've, I failed. And they're like, well, but then what do you do when you fail? Like, that is what defines you. When you fail, what's your response to failure? And that is what Bost is looking for. So, yeah, you failed, but now Bost is watching you. He turned his back on you uh, because in that moment you failed. But now he's probably leering back over his shoulder to see what you do now that he told you you failed. And that's what leads her to push herself to the point where she becomes the new Black Panther. So I like that a lot. And there's also a great moment with Storm in this because she makes a trip to the ancestral realm as well to talk to T'Challa's father and to find T'Challa himself because his soul is now trapped in limbo at the astral plane between his world, the real world, and the, the world that they go to when they die. Uh, and so he's trapped there uh, because he's in a coma. So Storm, who's the queen, you know, and married to him, she's like, that. that's her story in this, is she finds a way to, you know, transport her spirit into that realm and find T'Challa and bring him back into his body. So I thought that was really cool too. So they gave Storm a really awesome story in this as well. And I could tell that Reggie just, he loves writing these characters. He loved bringing Storm in. He gave her a big moment in this, a couple big moments. Uh, Shuri, she really earns the mantle in this, which I really liked um, because there's grief there, there's entitlement, there's ignorance. There's all these things a young person who is losing someone they love feels and she, you know, grows because of all those challenges. And, and so I love that the most about this story is that Shiri really does earn that mantle in this book. Um, so I, I liked it a lot. And I don't want to spoil too much about the ending, uh, but there's, like I said, throughout this run, there's Dr. Doom stuff, there's Namar stuff, there's the sinking of Wakanda or flooding of Wakanda. There's so many things in this run that you got to check out. But the first book, Deadliest of the Species, I really loved because I at first was kind of like, nah, it's got to be T'Challa. He's got to be the Black Panther. Who is who, what's, who is it going to be? And, uh, you know, and I was like, is it his sister? Is it going to be one of the Dora Milaje's? Like, who, who could possibly take up this mantle? Uh, is it going to be Storm? You know, and I was actually really glad of the outcome. And I, this story convinced me that this was the way to go with the character. And that's why I'm interested about the movie, because like Reggie Hudlin, Ryan Coogler is a very talented storyteller. I mean, this guy, he's, he brought the Rocky franchise back, which is my favorite franchise of all time. I love the Rocky movies. And so when he brought it back with Creed, you know, I was like, okay, this guy, I'm going to be following his career from now on. So please, yes, go pick up these two books, Who is the Black Panther and Deadliest of the Species. They're out there now. You can get them on Comixology. And I'm sure they're going to probably start releasing a lot of these or re-releasing them in trade and hardcover now that the new movie is coming out. So, uh, so pick them up and let me know what you think down below. So there will probably be spoilers in the comments down below for people who want to talk spoilers. But hopefully in the video, I kept it mostly spoiler free. And hopefully I don't give away too much of things that could happen in the next movie. But if you want maybe some of those hints, go pick up these books right now. They're awesome. Thanks so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And leave your comments down below. And like I said, we'll continue talking down there. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.